Mm. Gears. These ones are Imperial. Metric gears. And they need to go in the lathe so that I can cut some metric threads. Now, I know there's already loads of videos on YouTube about people cutting threads and changing change gears and all of that jazz. Um, so I'm not going to be teaching anybody how to do any of this stuff. In fact, I haven't, obviously, as you can see, all of this stuff is still in its packaging. So it's never been on my machine and I haven't even cut any threads on my machine yet. So this is going to be interesting. Um, I may even resort to the manual for the gearbox, who knows. Anyway, um, so this is for a reason and um, which I'll explain in just a moment. Okay, so here's the reason for needing to change the um, Imperial gears over to the metric gears on the machine. Um, I'm going to need to turn two back plates um, to fit these two chucks onto the machine. So this is this is a brand new uh, Pratt Bernard four jaw chuck, six inch diameter. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, um, I can't find anywhere that sells back plates for the for the Myford uh, that are big enough to take a six inch chuck. Uh, the whole pattern um, is something like 140 millimeter um, pitch circle diameter. So I need at least 150 millimeter diameter. Um, uh, piece of billet um, and also I have this magnetic chuck which does have a back plate at the moment but it's not the right back plate for my machine so um, for these two chucks uh, I'm going to need to make a back plate each the, um, so the spindle on the machine it's an M42.5 by 2mm pitch thread um, so this will be an interesting exercise um, see if I can get this right the first time around um, and I'll show you how I'm changing the, the gears over and my approach to thread cutting. Stay tuned. Okay we're back. So um, there was a bit of head scratching going on there so rather than you watch me changing gears over, um, getting confused and all of that stuff, I decided to do it off camera. Um, so, in the kit of change gears, um, there's this, um, there's another yoke, uh, which is this set, this plate here, um, which holds these two little stub shafts with these two pairs of gears on. So, the handbook for the gearbox says that uh, these two gears need to be uh, 60 and 63 teeth, and these two need to be 45 and 50 and then this one needs to be 60 teeth. So that's what they are. Uh, I've configured them so that the, um, so that the, the teeth of the gears are not fully into the roots of each other like that. So I've, I've just backed them off with a, a small amount of clearance um, just so that um, it doesn't promote undue wear. And if there's any run out in these gears, uh, um, then there could be a tight spot and it just overloads things and it's not good. So anyway, so there's a, a little bit of clearance, uh, maybe about 100 microns, 200 microns, something like that. Um, and then when I when I took the old yoke off, I say old, it's not old, it's just the other yoke that was on it, that was holding the, the standard set of Imperial gears. Um, I noticed this shaft, uh, which um, one of the sets of gears was running on. Um, it's pretty dry and you, I can see that there's been some galling on here. Um, so there is um, a lubrication point. So this shaft is all down the middle and there's a little port there and it's all dry. So it doesn't look as if the lube has been getting down into here. Um, so that's not good. And <clears throat> it was a little bit uh, squeaky. And as far as I was aware, everything was lubed up, but apparently not. So, um, so there we go. Um, so I have run it up. I, I ran it by hand first. Um, so I, I span the, the chuck around by hand. I'm just looking for any tight spots and there aren't any obvious tight spots. Um, and so I'll just jog it round. Um, so I've got the jog function 
uh, on the control panel. Whoops. There we go. So on this machine, it's handy because you've either got a uh, constant on or you can jog it. And um, so that's handy. So just bear with me I'll put you back. There we go. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, so I'll just jog this round. Um, and I have already done this, but I'm just demonstrating now. So that's all okay. So that runs up. And that's, it's not particularly noisy. That seems fine. So the next step now will be to um, set the gearbox it needs to be in uh, position A1 uh, for a two millimeter pitch. So I'll set the gearbox up for that and then we'll have a look at doing a little um, uh, thread cutting test and we'll check that we've got the right pitch. I've got a piece of half inch stainless steel bar in the three jaw chuck. Um, I've turned a length down just to 12 mil, uh, doesn't matter the diameter. Um, and I've put quite a generous uh, undercut in here so we've got somewhere for the uh, threading tool to run into. Um, and, and I've set the threading tool up, we're at centre height and all of that. Um, and I've, I've already done a touch on so I know where I am. Um, so I'm going to take a, a light scratch pass now. Um, I'll take off about 0.1 of a mil. Um, and, uh, and then we'll check the thread pitch to see if, uh, if we're set up correctly. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so there's a very faint uh, mark there. So let's get in with the gauge. And that looks pretty good. So that's a two mil thread pitch gauge. Um, let me zoom in if I can. Okay, that's the maximum zoomage. Anyway, it matches up and it's the right pitch, so that's good. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, cue a bit of uh, time-lapse uh, thread cutting. Okay, so I've turned that thread, um, not to any particular dimension, but um, just testing the thread cutting out really. Um, so ma the main thing is that um, the pitch is correct, fits the uh, thread pitch gauge nicely, um, so that's good. Um, and also, um, an observation, I suppose, um, when turning, the, because it's a 2 mil pitch, it's quite a, a deep thread. Um, so let me zoom out and show you the arrangement. So, um, so on this machine, I've, re I've removed the um, compound slide and I've replaced it with this solid tool post mount. Um, and it's fine, it's working nicely. Um, and um, some people, um, when they turn threads, they set the compound slide uh, to the angle of the thread and then they put the increments on each time or the depth of cut via the compound slide and that's fine that's a very valid way of doing it um, I suppose the advantage of doing it that way is that the turning tool um, only cuts on the leading edge um, so with that approach um, the turning tool just cuts on on this left hand side of the of the uh, thread cutting tool um, the way I've been doing it is I've been plunging in the x-axis because I don't have the compound slide. Um, and the disadvantage of that when thread cutting, particularly deep threads like this one, is that the tool therefore cuts on both sides at the same time. So the cutting forces tend to get start getting quite high 
um, because of that, um, the amount of engagement around the, uh, the tip of the tool, um, which doesn't happen when you're turning threads via the compound slide. Um, like I said, it's just cutting on one side of the tool instead of both sides of the tool. And you barely notice it in the early stages, but when you get to full depth on the threads, that you really start noticing it then, and you can see that the cutting forces are quite high. But anyway, it's it's worked well enough. Um, there's a, a good surface finish in the threads, and um, when I come to turn the internal threads on the uh, back plate, um, I'll be using uh, a much stiffer tool, um, so um, that should be fine. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. That, that's it for this one. Um, I'll do a follow-up video uh, when I start machining um, the the back plates. Um, but uh, but yeah, this as a as a, a setup test, um, it's gone well, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.